Greetings citizen, it's Sunday already which means it's time to dive head first into another round of this week in Star Citizen. So, let's kick off with the Star Citizen monthly report, and have a look see at some of the more interesting bits. Ship AI completed the first iteration of the full 3D navigation system for NPC ships. And there's a handy dandy video that shows, something. Social AI continued polishing vendor behavior. Currently, the vendor can pick up and deliver anything that already exists in the world, such as a bottle of beer, and prepare many things that don't, such as a cocktail. They're also working on other social behaviors, such as fitness and janitor activities. So, NPCs mopping up high fidelity puke from Wallace Bar confirmed. Art, environment. The team updated the pipelines and streamlined the creation process on asset packs and any files left over from the conversion to v4 were cleaned up this puts them in a good place to continue with new content for the pyro system awesome the gib pyro campaign can now begin in earnest the ship art department in the us has been busy working on the m50 cockpit and the white box for a new as yet an announced ship curious they have also been at work setting up the tint system, and enabled cockpit canopies, to support VFX rain effects, and ongoing shader work. Top banana. The audio bods finished up a pass on the Karak, which it must be said sounds great, except the engines are way too loud inside the ship. The audio for the three new Microtech moons has also been done. New Star Citizen album coming to the RSI store soon, The Sound of Moons. Backend services. The iCache is in the final stages. This is exciting, and could mean a more comprehensive version of long term persistence could be coming soon. Community. The team dubbed last month February with friends. I'm guessing we could be in for March with monkeys. Let the shit flinging begin. Engineering. The Frankfurt Engineering Department have apparently kidnapped a whole bunch of random technical words, and have been holding them against their will. So this is not so much a report, but a hostage situation. Here's an example. Investigating the full parallelization of integration parts in physics time step code multithreading the polygonize function for interior volumes. What the actual fuck does that even mean? Here's another beauty. The Ray Marcher was simplified by removing the explicit evaluations of segments to significantly compact generated code and reduce register use. The Frankfurt department are therefore winners of this year's Let's Call a Spader Manual Earth 3 Distributing Implement Award for totally incomprehensible shite. We could just replace that entire section with Frankfurt have been working on super important stuff that's super important. There. Fucking job done. The level design team spent February finalizing and polishing new Babbage. Sweet. Looking forward to having a mosey around this cool looking new landing zone. The lighting team have been busy preparing for prisons, so that the attached cave network will feature more man-made lighting than other subterranean locations, the goal being to establish a dark, oppressive, and uncomfortable atmosphere. The props team have been working on not only street furniture, shop interiors, and bar furniture, but giant space gooseberries, ice cream and pre-packed sandwiches. Rumor has it that, true to real life service stations, these sandwiches will be out of date, hugely overpriced, underfilled, and contain high enough levels of botulism to put a hippo on its ass. I feel bad for constellation owners right now who still have no functioning shitter. <coughs> the QA team in Frankfurt got a new tester. They are currently in training, but will soon specialize in combat AI and advanced technical word salad techniques. Turbulence web team supported the flyable release of the Karak and presumably the fuck up with the expedition variant not being spawnable. The VFX team completed a significant amount of content for the prison, new Babbage interiors, and Microtex moons. They finalized their work on several new health effects that communicate to players when they are too hot, too cold, or ready for a dodgy service station sandwich. So, overall, a lot of info here. Thank you CIG, and especially the Frankfurt office. We haven't the fucking foggiest what you've been up to, but it sounds important. Top job. 
Anyway, there's a whole lot of information in this report, so I'll put the link in the description below. Go check it out. Star Citizen Live. CIG's resident Disco Beard sat down with the Papmeister this week to talk about all the things that are not coming in Alpha 3.9 later this month. It all started a little bit like, but then ended up more like. In all fairness, some of the questions from the community were a bit fucking daft. Like energy bars, will we eat the wrapper? Shit like that. There were some good questions in amongst it all though, that the Papmeister did his best to be as vague as fuck about. Here's a brief summary of Papa's answers. No. No, 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 no. No, it's not. No. My gut feeling is no. 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 Uh, three not nine? for 3-9? We're no, no, no. The element. No. No. No, not for 3-9. I don't think it is. So they're not in 3-9. Not for 3-9? Yeah, it, no. Sounds great, Uncle Pappy. Thanks for clearing that all up. I give him shit. But the Papmeister is about as fucking cool as they come. Stay frosty, baby. So although it's always nice to see the Papmeister and the Disco Beard, I can't help but think a little more preparedness of the questions wouldn't have been a bad idea. Never mind. At least we are getting prisons, some new moons, and gas station food. Roll on 3.9. New Jump Point Magazine. February's Jump Point magazine is now available, and contains two Whitley's guides, one for the Cutlass Red and the other for the Carrack. There's also a developer interview with Michael Sizemore, and Josh Coons about work on the new Cutlass Red. And as an added bonus, there's some more guff about the 2950 Imperator elections, if you're into that sort of thing. And judging by the last page, subscriber flare for February will be a set of glow sticks. Epic. I can't wait. Inside Star Citizen. This week, Jared stands in front of a door while Luke Presley, Elliot Maltby, and James Johnston talk about the new multiplayer missions coming in 3.9. Some of these look pretty neat, and will require a high degree of cooperation among players. So good luck with that. One mission in particular will see players take on an AI Idris. Now before you get all excited, this is not a finished Idris, rather a hollowed out shell, but by all accounts, is still a formidable opponent, and will require pretty much everyone on the server to take it down. However, if you manage to do it, then that's it for you. No more Idris fun as the mission can only be completed once, so you will have to get other people to accept the mission, and join them, if you want another stab at it. This has been done for, reasons. We then learn about some new tools the environment team are using to speed up development, and that picking the right shade of blue for the next cutlass model is proving to be more difficult than anyone had imagined. Expect a color refactor to eggshell blue in the next few weeks along with a prison pod refactor to make them look more, Drake. In other words, functionally shabby and devoid of style. We then get a sneaky peek at the bottom half dropship section of the SP rear budgie, and find out the Tavarin have been cloning Miles Eckhart. Scary shit. Then, we get a gander at how daylight lighting will work in 3.9. This is a welcome change I think, and will help make locations feel more alive. Next, we take a look at some of the new clothing items coming for the merry folks of Microtech, along with an early work in progress looksy at Waller's bar in New Babbage. This new bar looks fucking cooler than a snowman's cold bits, but the clothing, although quite beautifully designed is, not exactly my cup of tea I'm afraid. And I fucking love this giant glowing foggy rock thing. Can we has one as next month's subscriber flare CIG? Make it so. Finally we see Uncle Disco Beard come to terms with the inevitable fact that doors are prone to opening now and again. And for as much shit as I give old Huckabee, it has to be said, he does an amazing job, and this week's ISC was another great episode. Top marks sir. Roadmap Roundup. 
finally for this week, let's have a quick look at the latest updates to the roadmap. Law System version 2 surrender mechanic has been canned and moved to the 4.0 column due to tasks taking longer to complete than anticipated. So your options for getting arrested, remain getting shot in the face, or getting shot in the face. Nice. The next item is quite interesting though, space station cargo deck. The notes read. Cargo decks are facilities within rest stops where players can handle all of their cargo needs. From dropping off and picking up, to storing, renting space, buying new cargo equipment, and taking on cargo related missions. Wow, this actually sounds pretty bloody cool. So hopefully, if I'm understanding this correctly, we won't need to go on an epic cross country fucking tram ride, just to get to a building with a row of iPads, that they could have put in the hangar, that you just fucking landed at half an hour ago, just so you can sell your hold full of scrap. This sounds like a really good new feature, almost as good as a feature, that would allow us to refuel our fucking ships would be. Just imagine that. The following cards have been moved to polish on the PU. Player interaction system improvements. Player status system version 1. Weather locomotion. Microtex 3 new moons and the ship AI avoidance thing. Cool beans. So all in all. 3.9 looks like it will be a pretty good patch with some cool new content which I'm looking forward to. And the final thing this week. Here's a sneak peek at an attachment for the Grey Cat multi-tool. I'm guessing it's a device to allow large cargo to be moved by emitting hand wavy um or it's a pricing gun for R and R stations, to price up their sandwiches. Who knows. Right, well that's about it from me for this week. As always, thanks for watching. Now, comments like button slapping and subscribing. Do it now.